you know, having this intention of just, you know, being in gratitude, being at peace, being calm and embracing all things wound up allowing me to qualify for not only the 70.3 worlds, but the Ironman World Championships in Kona. Both of those got checked off the list last year. And I don't believe it was a mistake at all. I believe all the energy um, and intention that I had set forth by releasing even more pressure on myself to achieve, just allowing things to unfold, um, served up that delicious, um, <laughs> that delicious reward in, <laughs> in 2021. To live more vibrantly, to continue to raise my consciousness and, and live the demonstration and get out there and do gnarly, dirty, dirty races and have fun and be competitive and be a human, uh, you know, and, uh, and also realize that there's something greater that's driving my ship. And that's the something greater that, I'm going to continue to allow to organize my life as well, that I'm willing to experience whatever I need to experience in order to fully fulfill what I came here to do. And that experience with Mary was, was one of those things. Uh, I just didn't know that, you know, I was going to have to experience something like that. But I do believe that we can be okay. And I do believe that everything resolves to good. And I've seen an incredible amount of good and that good comes from that source of love. And uh, so I have a deeper relationship with, with that love now. Welcome back to The O Show, a Yogi Triathlete production. I'm here with Beej and this is it, guys. This is our turn in front of the mics. One of the pieces of feedback that you guys give us a lot, which is so awesome, oh man, I love it, is it's such reinforcement is that we allow our guests to speak. And then once a month, Beej and I get behind the mics and then we get to speak. And, you know, I have to tell you, I don't even know if I've ever told you this, BJ, but we did a podcast with, um, it was Brian Rose. Like, I, I totally was just like, I'm going to pretend like I don't know what, what podcast. It was po- Brian Rose podcast. And someone made a comment on the blog post on our website about how it was a missed opportunity. Oh, I did tell you that. A missed opportunity and that we we didn't let him speak. And oh my God, I was, it, oh, like, oh, it hurt. It just triggered all that unworthiness because I came off of that podcast uh, feeling so good. And I love that conversation. We had a great conversation with Brian after we stopped recording. And I was just like, but this person doesn't know like that we connected and it was great. And anyway, so I thank that person. You know, I don't think, I think in that comment, they said they weren't going to listen anymore. And, um, but I, and it doesn't matter because I thank that person so much couple of things, right? Like the only way we can grow is by feeling the pain that's holding us back. So that person gave me that opportunity. And then also it really gave me this, um, it really gave me permission to pull back and let the guest speak. And it's not always easy because I mean, it's not, it's just not always easy, right? You're getting these constant impulses like about things that you want to talk about, or it's triggering stories within you. And you really want to give the space for the guest to be the guest and to be the star of the show. Um, and uh, and also, it's just like that. I don't need to get my little fingers into everything, you know. It's enough. It's enough. And when we do that, like when we crawl in there and we're like trying to control everything and steer it and and all of that, it just I don't know, you know. You, you end up getting exactly what you don't want, which is like that comment that we got. So anyway, I'm glad that you guys. Uh, Enjoy that, and um, I hope we do a good job of you know getting in there, asking the questions, maybe sharing a little bit of experience, and then getting out because our guests do have incredible stories to share. Every story, every single person that's listening to this has a spectacular story, um, and it's just those that come into alignment with us and come on the show. I really hope that you guys are taking something away from it. So, yeah. Here we are on the O Show. When you and I get to talk, it's December 2021. This is going to launch in a couple of weeks. And so I thought it would be a good opportunity to reflect, which is really like a mindful practice to reflect. 
Yeah. As much our, as we talk about, sorry to cut you off. No, <laughs> go. I've been talking for four minutes and 17 seconds. Well, as much as we talk about being present and focused on now, there are benefits to having reflection moments, you know, opportunities to look back and, and see how, you know, I was just writing this in Training Peaks to see how far you've come as an athlete, to see, you know, how you got to this race, like use that as an appreciation um, for the the struggle you went through and the power and um, um, radiance that you use to to shine in this moment. So use that as reflection. Um, I think where we get caught up is like, well, things happen like this in the past, so now it's always going to be like that moving forward. But I love reflections like this on our intentions. I like that we called it intentions last year. Like, what are our intentions for twenty twenty one? Was what we had, uh, what we had asked each other, and I like that better than New Year's resolutions and all the baggage that comes along with that. Because we can always be sending intentions, like just because it's the end of the year, it's, it just seems everybody does. Well, it's a it's a time of year where there's a lot of change, especially starting on January first. We cannot deny that there's a lot of energy of change that's available. A lot of people are wanting to take that next step forward in their path in a way that, you know, is going to benefit them, them, their communities, their families. And so you want to take advantage of that energy. The the thing is, is that you don't, when the energy drops, like when people are like, you know, I'll just have one cigarette. When that stuff starts happening, you, that's when you got to like, you got to like, Get the will going and you got to show up for what you said you were going to do. So at the beginning, that's why it's so easy at the beginning, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, It's so much easier because there's a lot of energy in that way and there's a lot of people making positive change, but not everyone is going to stay with that. So it's up to us, right? It's like up to you, whatever that intention is. It's got to be important enough for you to keep that going when the, the the collective momentum is dropping because that's typically what's... What's going to happen? It's just, I'm not trying to drag the past into the future. It's just kind of the the way this world works and how we work as human beings, right? And so we get time and time again, all these opportunities to make those changes throughout the year. But beginning of the year, there's great energy available. I think about when you, when people have an idea, right? We all have an amazing idea, but if and at first, it's like all the excitement and, and energy goes into it. But then, when the steps necessary to actually move that idea to actualization, like actually, there's a lot of things that are probably not in your wheelhouse, and you seem they seem daunting or challenging. And so we turn around and say, "Ah, oh, it's not, it's not worth the effort to put through." And that's exactly like these um, these intentions, like set the intention, but but continue to stick with it. We were having a conversation not too long ago about our stick to itness to what we do, and I think that's a big part of of why we are why we are successful and why people perceive us as successful because we stick to we stick to it for a long period of time. Yeah, and just act despite. Right, it's not like we wake up in the morning and we're like stick to itness. You know, it, it's baked into us. We're, we're we have strong work ethics, and that's just how we were raised and all of that. But act despite, act despite not feeling like getting out of bed. Act despite not feeling like um, going in front of those people and doing that talk that you're so nervous about. Right, like act despite um, all of the things that say don't write the book because everything that you've written so far is crap and it's confusing. Act despite. Um, a moment where you want to react, like act in a way that guides you towards what you desire and who you desire to be. Like act despite. Yeah. I can't remember who was saying it, but they, they said when you're caught in that moment of like indecision and, and indecisiveness in the mind, act, take action. Whatever action will be moving you towards that feels like a Mel Robbins. Maybe it was, Mel, it was Robbins. Mel Robbins. I can't remember. But it, it's the, you know, get up in the morning and your mind's like, wow, it's nice and warm under these blankets. And Clark is oh, he's on the bed and he's snuggling. Or I can just get up, put my stuff on and go out and get the workout done. Yeah. Clark offers great resistance in his non-resistant um, for the For those that form. aren't watching the video version of this, 
He's front and center. He should be in the video. I like to include him, but he's passed out. <laughs> Good. Well, last time, so last time we recorded at this time, remember, and he was getting like antsy. And so we were like, oh, we won't make this mistake again. We'll feed him and everything. And I'm just, it's all clicking in right now. We didn't feed him and I didn't take him out. However, <laughs> we weren't doing the walks. Oh, but we did go for a walk. We're, we're doing a lot of walks lately. <laughs> we did not. We intended to set ourselves up for success. And so well, far, it's going okay, despite last, not doing what we said we were going to do. Last week, I don't know, or our last podcast, I don't know if we did, if we got him out for exercise. But he's been walking a lot, <laughs> a lot, even though he's draggy boy. Draggy yeah. meaning he's, it's sometimes you're like pulling him behind. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> draggy boy. Um yeah, so why have we been walking more? Well, I've always felt, you know, walking is walking is uh underrated, but we just did a podcast with Bobby McGee to and it re- really reinforced the benefits of the walk um in a, in an athlete's progression into uh endurance, like going longer, more miles, more time on the legs. And it it sort of solidifies the the body um in a way, solidifies the healthiness. So we're not taxing the body too high that we need to spend more time recovering or go into potential you know, injury in the body. So walking is such a great bridge to getting up to um, the distances that you feel or that your coach believes is, is beneficial for you. So we just started, I think I said, let's start tracking our miles. I think it was about a week ago. Let's start bringing our watches on, on all our walks with Clark. Um, which has actually not purposefully got us into a mode of walking him more. Like we actually walk, I believe we walk him more oh, frequently. Oh, well, right. Yeah. So what I've seen come alive, like we're walking him two, three times a day, but what I saw come alive was like, well, let's just go for the mile. Right. Like, why don't we just keep going? Let's, let's go to the next stop sign. So it's, it's great because then that athlete comes out and it's like, well, if this is beneficial and it's super enjoyable and I'm getting time with my husband and my dog and we're talking about things and there's no technology and I can go another stop sign and I can get more benefit, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's great. But yeah, we've been, Clark's definitely walking more. I mean, you had how many miles last week? Over 40. Yeah, that's wild. And I'm just ramping up running. So I'm running 20 to 25 miles a week. Yeah, and I think I was like 30, I want to say I was like 33 or 35 miles and ran, you know, maybe a little over 20 miles. Um, yeah, so it's cool. And I love how, you know, I think it's just, it goes along with that thing where it says like, wherever you go, you take yourself with you, right? So it's like, we totally took ourselves with this. We're like, oh, let's, oh, we'll just track our, Mileage, and then we're like, yeah, but we could like get like a fifty mile weekend, you know? Like, let's and you bring that kind of that competitiveness into it, which is cool. But you're bringing, yeah, but you're. And bring- then I walked when you were at the pool today, and you were like, you have more miles than me, but you did an hour and a half swim, which I did not do today. <laughs> That's true, and I don't bring a watch to the pool, so there's no, there's no distance in that. I have no, walk. I, I have known for a very long time that there's going to be a time in my life where I just walk. And I do yoga, and it sounds so lovely. And I feel like I could re- I could easily slide into that right now in my life. Except there's this like animal inside that just wants to keep <laughs> like you know doing dirty long trail races and and you know d- realizing how it feels to get back into half Ironman distance, which I'm going to do in 2022. So yeah, I, like that that animal is still like kind of like. Clon. But you're having fun with it. Like, so fun. So, so much fun. You're not like tied to how it has to happen. Like you're not like, okay, well, I need to get 12 miles walking this week. It's really just an exploration of of uh, adding something that's going to benefit everyone. <laughs> everyone in this. Clark is benefiting from it. Our athletes are benefiting from it because I'm able to share this experience. You're listening to this podcast, you're like, well, I can go walk you know, down to... You know the Seven Eleven and get soda water, like, and that's a quarter mile. So that's a half mile. It's a quarter mile right. of Seven Eleven and back. Yeah, the, so torti- I, the tortilla chip run. <laughs> it's a half mile getting the tortilla chips. I love. I just love adding that. <laughs> I think you know. Backtrack to our conversation with Tommy Rives, and I think that's where it really mm. started when he started to walk eleven miles to work and eleven miles home when that he was coming so back. Sounds so lovely from his to me. It does. Yeah. 
Doesn't that sound lovely? Yeah. So that's why we're walking a lot more. Yeah. So that's, I'm liking that. It feels good on the body. It's a good way to build distance. And I love how he was, Bobby, pretty pretty obsessed with that podcast and the information that he dropped that day. Um, but after we got off the call with him, I had I had messed up the time zones, right? With all the time zones I'm doing, I'm like, okay, this person's on East Coast, this person's on Mountain Time, this person's in Mexico, and I'm like booking appointments with my athletes and things. And so I'm always doing time zone stuff. And every once in a while, something falls through the cracks. And one of those things was like, I had Bobby on our calendar for an hour earlier than the podcast was. So, um, so where was I going with that? Did you incorporate walking? Oh, yeah. So what happened that day because of that divine mistake was that I didn't have time to get the bike ride in that I wanted to do. So I said to you, I said, I can do a 45-minute bike ride or I can go out and like run. And and all, I just was like, oh, my God, tell me I can run. Tell me I can run. Tell me I can run. I just want to run because after talking to Bobby McGee, all you want to do is run. So I went out and ran that day and did like the 9-1, which felt so good. So, so nine running for... Mm-hmm nine minutes and walking for a minute. And I'm in my head, I'm going back and I'm just reflecting on our conversation with him and just really fleshing out all those wisdom bombs that he dropped. And the thing that I, is coming to me because it, this idea of run, walk came from our question about going slow to go fast, right? Which is, which is a very proven method, the math method, and I'm out there and I'm walking and I'm like all of a sudden I'm having all these realizations. I'm like, oh my God, what he's actually seeing in that podcast is like, yes, go slow to go fast, but perhaps there's also another way to achieve that and it's by run walk. So when you're running, you can actually run a little faster. So my heart rate was actually higher than what I would be doing for math, but because I was walking for a minute, that minute gives my body enough time to rest, recover, absorb, and then allows me to pick up and run again. And I'm like, I'm out there and I'm like mind blowing realization I'm having that like, oh my gosh, maybe, maybe there's this other way that we can do things. And he said that he's trying to get like his researcher friends to do a study on this because he thinks that it's going to be mind-blowing. And so I'm really, like, I've opened up this vault of curiosity around this, and I want to keep being that experiment of one for myself to see how it goes. Because sometimes when I'm doing my math, a lot of times it's really uncomfortable. Like, it's almost painful because I'm really at this really slow pace, and this actually feels better. So let's I'm willing to be an experiment. I'm willing to, you know, see if my fitness goes up or down because of it. But I don't know. I just got blown away by in the in the time after the podcast to listen and let it all absorb and marinate and realize like the messages that he's truly saying in there are quite profound. Well, he's got 40 years of experience. Is there quite it's I was really looking forward to that that podcast and it, I think it I wanted to say so much more so back to what we were talking about earlier. Like I wanted to go on. You were like, okay, we've got to wrap this up. And I really wanted to ask more, but that was my agenda. Like I wanted to cover specific things. You know, I, I noticed that. And so that's when you just allow the conversation to end in, in everything that needed to be said will, will present itself and then have them back on in the future. And there's no reason why we can't. And save save the save even more good stuff for later on. Or maybe it's he comes across something else or another athlete that he works with that he can share. There's his nothing on. I don't I haven't found anything like that's not positive about leaving you wanting more. True. As the person who was, you know, interviewing that day, like I was left with wanting more. I hope our listeners were left with wanting more. And yeah, we can just have them back on and it'll be another awesome conversation. But that's, you know, that's the mind and that's the ego. Like, I want to do it right and I'm going to get every topic covered thoroughly in an hour with this guy who has 40 years experience. Yeah. That's why I don't like the rapid fire questions because you're covering like, like 10 different topics super quick. 
I get it. Like it brings, a, but you really can't do a deep dive into that stuff. Apples or oranges? <laughs> that, those <laughs> yeah, kind of questions. <laughs> They're yeah, fun. Yeah, it's fun. It is. Okay. So what do we? Where do you so want to start? So that's a wrap. Um, why <laughs> not? Intentions, intentions. Yeah, I'd love well, for you to start. Okay. Just reflections on your intentions and how you feel like you did this year, and just a reflection on the year overall. I actually had to go back and hear what my intentions were. I couldn't remember what they were. I thought it was unconditional love, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw that in there too. Focus on unconditional love because um, it was soon after my mom had passed, and you know her her big theme was unconditional love. So you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and don't forget to listen oh, to the death and injury episode <laughs> that we launched. When it was before injury. that one. <laughs> it was before. So that one, we talk about, and you're like, Beach, don't talk about death or dying. Like, we're not going to do the Ds. And you're like, and yeah, it would just move forward. We had talked enough about it because we talked about it before. It's a good, okay, we're it's talking a about good it now. topic. It's a good topic. Anyway. We need it, and we need it. We didn't realize we were going to need that topic for yeah, 2021, for but sure. we did. But yeah, unconditional love, you know, really just, you know, becoming aware of, of judgment, I think, was the biggest. Uh, win for me, just being, you know, the commentary in your head. And you've said it many times. It doesn't matter if you speak it or think it, it's still the same, still the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it counts. The same thing. It all, it's all the you same. You can't be like in your head, go like in your mind, yeah. like thinking like you're a total this or that right. and not have it count. Like it's done. Damage is done. You're hurt. They're hurt. Yeah. So the, the ability to sh- shift from that <laughs> quick, more quickly happened more often this year, you know, where you shift to like, well, let's, let's have some compassion, like understand where these people are at this point in time and understand that they're doing the best they can. And more moments like that, more, more, um, allowing and and loving versus like judgmental and, you know, resistance wise. Um, that was pretty powerful for me. And, and, you know, part of me wants to fully, not fully embrace it. I fully embrace it, but be more aware of it more. Like I feel like I dropped the ball. Like you, you feel unconditional love, and then you drop the ball, and then you feel unconditional love, and then you drop the ball. But as I say to our athletes, and as they start up something that's new for them, like meditation, like yeah, you're gonna fall. You're gonna. There's gonna be moments that you're gonna um, not approve of what you're thinking or what you're doing, but you're getting better at it. And as long as you're aware of it and take steps to get to to get better and to be more, um, be more embracing of that, you're doing okay. You're, you're doing okay. Um, at least that's, that's my belief. So I, I think that was, that was pretty powerful. The other one was um, to be a deliberate creator in my life, which uh, was news to you. And actually it was news <laughs> to me when I, was, when I reheard it. I'm like, what? But what that means to me in the conversation when I went on to explain it really is about taking in the moments and being patient and um, understanding that deliberate creation is not like, I am going to grind my way through this, um, through this training session so I get on the other side and I get my qualification and, and really efforting. It's, it's about noticing the moments that are, that are causing contrast so that you can pick up on what you don't want. Like I, I started to see things of for Clark, for example, like rushing through walks versus allowing him to sniff a little bit more and, and had more appreciation for that. <laughs> what? <laughs> but you got to keep your eye on that because you can be on one spot for a long time. Right. If you follow us on Strava, <laughs> you'll see some walks for a mile take an hour. And that's because of Sniffy Boy. So that was... <laughs> That was re- really something I embraced, uh, and I watched myself notice that and slow down a little bit. And in the end, and I talked about it in that intention, in that part of the the podcast where we talked about intention, was that it's gonna it's gonna give reward on the other end. It's gonna give it's gonna give you it's gonna open up space for you to get the thing that you want. You know, the thing that you're striving for. Or um, one of the goals that you've been you've been working towards, and it actually absolutely delivered last year. You know, having this intention of just you know being in gratitude, being at peace, being calm, and embracing all things 
wound up allowing me to qualify for not only the 70.3 Worlds, but the Ironman World Championships in Kona. Both of those got checked off the list last year. And I don't believe it was a mistake at all. I believe all the energy um, and intention that I had set forth by releasing even more pressure on myself to achieve, just allowing things to unfold, um, served up that delicious, um, <laughs> that delicious reward in, in 2021. Like I can't, I, the only thing is I wasn't able to race Kona in 2021, but I'll be racing in 2022. Um, it's quite, I wouldn't say unexpected, but it, because I, I have a knowing and inner knowing that all that would happen, but it's interesting that to, to, to think that you have stepped back and allowed things, that there's even another level of allowing. <laughs> there's some more to go. And even now, there's more to go. Um, you just said it today, I think, um, that things can be done with less effort. Like, it's absolutely true. You can achieve everything you want with less effort. Um, and so that, for me, I, I really... I really believe that was a, a great intention. I don't know how I'm going to top that next year. <laughs> I'm assuming we're going to create intentions for 2022 at the end oh, of this. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. It's yeah. a very good idea. But uh, what did you, um, what did you well, intend? I, as you were just describing that and uh, qualifying, I want you to take us back to being in the park in Coeur d'Alene when they were doing the the slot allocation. Like, tell us about that experience as a deliberate creator. Wow, yeah, because actually I was, I, I was, everybody was telling me I had a spot, I had a spot, I had a spot. And at World Championships, you race on Sunday and then you, you wait a whole day or a whole night and they don't do it until nine or 10 o'clock the next day. So you have time to wait. But everybody was telling me that I had my spot, I had my spot. And, and I, what did that tell you about those people? That they um, that they had full um, faith and um, support of what I was trying to achieve. They fully were. They were in. They were part of the journey. They were invested in it themselves, which made me feel all um, made me feel good. I'll be honest. It really made me feel good that the collective is reaping the um, the joy from what I had experienced myself. But everybody was telling me I qualified, and I had this. And I just thought about it. Like, I had this feeling that I, I needed to wait and see it before it actually happened. You know, because with Kona roll down, there's all this like stuff that can happen. Which is not deliberate creation. Which is not deliberate creation. It's the opposite of deliberate creation. But here's the other thing I just thought about this. <laughs> the first triathlon I won, I crossed the finish line and everybody was saying that you had won. And I said, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> You don't understand. Like we all started the swim, and because it was a pool swim, we all started at different. We were all seated differently, so I got to wait for the people, everyone, to finish before I knew. And even that day, I was like resisting a little bit that this could be true. So yeah, like thing. when I remember you telling me something about when you brought your bike into T one and it was empty, you were like super confused. Like, did I not? Did I miss a lap? Did I miss a lap? That was yeah. That was my first thing. Yeah, <laughs> but it, in Coeur d'Alene, I was in the. I, I think I took the photo of it, or somebody took a photo of it. Like I stood up, and I'm just waiting, waiting. They were calling, and they called my name, and and then it happened. And so, what did you do when you recognized that, like, there was that part of you that needed to see it in order to believe it? What was that? That was old me. That was old, old, um, old stuff. So I'm not perfect. Like I'm. I'm working my way through um, 100% believing. You know, I'm closer than I've ever been. Uh, but I noticed the mind, you know, wanting certainty first. It, before I could be overfilled with joy, <laughs> I was joyful because I knew the potential was there and I've learned to detach. But to have that overfilling, overflowing joy of being, of being on your way to Kona was... Um, was sort of, you know, capped. It was jarred up. It was like suppressed for a little bit until that actually happened. But then once it happened, to, to, I mean, 
the people that came up to me in line, like uh, Amy Height came up to me. I remember she came up and gave me a hug. And I remember I got we got back to the and Hillary was there. And she gave me she gave me a big hug. She knew how long that I've been working for this, but it was pretty cool. Um, really cool. And I have allowed myself to be joyful about it. You know, as much as I'm like in control and got perspective, like I'm super overfilled with joy. Um, for that experience, but yeah, I, I, you know, I've got stuff. I've got stuff too, like doubt, fear, um, unworthiness. Like I, I can qualify for Kona. Of course you can. Of course you can. Can you do it again? Absolutely. Yeah. Once. Yeah. Absolutely. Now it's even stronger. Now it's like you're like Roger Bannister now. Yeah, like I want to do seventy point three worlds again and Kona again. Yeah, I think, and I think like. People on the team now have woken up to this desire that they also want to be qualify for worlds, which is so cool. It's so cool. And it's in their field and it's closer than ever because of you, right? We're always feeding off each other and uh, benefiting or or not (laughs) benefiting each other. Uh, It's going to go either way. But yeah, so is that, those were your intentions? Mm -hmm. Deliberate creator. I thought you had one more. Deliberate creator. No. Unconditional love. I can't remember. That's all I talked about. In okay, I thought you told me something else on our walk. No, I don't remember okay. which walk. The one we We're did. Going a lot of walks. <laughs> the one we just did. The one that was point eight one miles. Not that we're counting. <sighs> what was your intention? Because as I had to go back and listen to it, as soon as I was done, I shut it off. Yeah, and then I, I, and my intentions were exactly what I thought they were. Uh, but I had forgotten one, which was to have an epic camp. We were having our virtual, virtual. camp. Mm-hmm. And, and I said something along the lines of it, like, like that I could feel something really awesome was going to take place and that it was going to be better than we could have imagined. And, it was 100% better than we could have imagined. And I don't know if it's... The, the only thing I can like deduce in, in my analytical mind, like my, my intellect, is that people were in their homes. So maybe that provided this extra space of safety. But I felt like we went super deep and people were super open and they pushed themselves... So, like we had, I mean, for us here in Southern California, it was like we we were, we had it made. Like there was a girl, Renee, in New Hampshire, like, and there was a massive storm that was moving through the Northeast. And these, and we had several people from the Northeast in this, at, on this virtual camp and they're going out in like blizzard conditions. So we would meet up before every run and like you and I would be like in tank tops and our sunnies and like they would, you couldn't even, all you could see was like maybe their eyes because they had like scarves wrapped around their heads. And we just had this, we, we had exactly what I had desired in, when I was talking about it in that podcast, like it was really cool. It was so special. And, um, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll do. We can do. You know, short little camps. There's a lot of yoga retreats and and uh, meditation retreats that are now like people are doing them on Zoom for the weekend. So it's so cool because it opens up a whole gaggle of opportunities and possibilities. So that was one of the intentions. Uh, the other intention was to continue to live a vibrant life, and so didn't really know how that was gonna happen or what that was going to look like other than, you know, doing what I was already doing and then just staying open to possibility. And it was so cool how my higher self created it all because then we got blood work done. And then I, <laughs> we had that podcast where it was like confessional, like my cholesterol was high. It was, oh, it was crazy. Like, and not my good cholesterol, my bad cholesterol was high. And actually my good cholesterol was kind of like dropped a few points, which is not that great. And so, and at that same time, we got Rip Esselstyn on the calendar coming in for a podcast. I'm like, okay. And then we had um, Adam Sud come. We had Dr. Goldhammer. We had all these amazing people in the plant-based world 
Um, we get hooked up with plant-based telehealth, and now we're um, interviewing one of their doctors every month. And so we're, I'm getting all this information. And, and the first one, and probably like the, the biggest action I took right away after I got the, the results, and then, of course, after our conversation with Rip, was like, no oil no oil. And we shut it down. Like no cooking with oil, no oil in the food, Mm -hmm. all the products. Like we ate whatever was in the fridge and then we stopped buying things. We, and it really taught us to, um, what did Rip call it? Like be a label reading warrior. It really called us to like read and we learned so much about our food and and then I would say I was like pretty hardcore about that because to me, having high cholesterol was completely unacceptable. And it, it's, I say high, it wasn't high. It was at risk of being high. Like it was, it had gone up, right? So but you do w- nothing, it's probably going to continue to go up. But why wait till, why would you wait till right. it's like I was well like, above? Yeah. Like the body I want to live in and having a buildup of cholesterol, like that's unacceptable to me. I don't know. So, and because I know I have control over that and it was probably the oil, like I was thinking probably the oil and also processed food. We stopped, we shut down processed food, like no chips, no whatever. So we did that pretty hardcore for, I don't know, maybe six months or so. And then we started to like add some things back in because we realized that like that hummus, that majestic hummus, which is made with sprouted garbanzo beans and it has oil in it, the joy that I am able to expand when I eat that hummus, I think far surpasses the oil that's in it. So we started to let things back in. We started to vet products and bring the ones that really we wanted back in. So not all was lost because in that six months or so, so much unnecessary stuff fell away. And so what happens, right? Like our microbiome changes. So when we bring in, um, we start bringing in products with a little bit of oil in it, and then that's kind of where it ended. I've stopped. We haven't cooked with oil in almost a year. Bought. I mean, I was buying olive oil, like actual olive oil, every few weeks. Like yeah, like we were using. We were cooking with a lot of it. I don't even look at it. I don't even look at it at the store. And you're like, don't. Yeah, I'm not not looking. (laughs) I'm not looking at you. I literally put my hands up. And so, yeah, so it's not like we swung the other direction. We had rid ourselves of some things that weren't beneficial, and we welcomed some things back in that were kind of like, yeah, I like that. Like, let's bring it in. And um, and then I just had my, I haven't said this yet, but I had my blood work done again about a month ago, and my everything's great. My cholesterol dropped 23 points, and I'm like back in the optimized zone. But here's... The interesting thing, which I thought was not so surprising, was that when I got the blood work done this time, I went through uh, my doctor, right? Because we pay for insurance, but like I haven't been to a doctor in, I don't know, like I can't even remember the last time I had a cold. And the last time I went to a doctor, like it was probably an orthopedic. I can't remember. I mean, it's been 15, probably 15 years, maybe 20 years. That I've been to a doctor, so I'm just paying for all this insurance. So I was like, well, maybe I'll use my insurance. Like, go figure, I'll go use my insurance. And I got on the phone with the doctor, and all of the things that were kind of a little bit off, you know, other things, there was B12, vitamin D, all that stuff was just, I gave it a little extra attention, and everything's back where it needs to be. But I had to kind of fight for these things to be tested because we went through Inside Tracker before. And they just, they test for all these different things, like 44 markers. And with insurance, she was like, well, we only do that for blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, can you do it? And she was like, yeah, I'll add it to the list. And I'm like, okay, thank you. You know, she was really nice, but she was like, what she was telling me is that the numbers that Inside Tracker is saying, like, you're at risk. Like, she's saying, oh, no, that's fine. Oh, you're perfect. Are you kidding? No, we wouldn't even, we wouldn't even medicate you at this point. And I'm like... So what I realized through, and the doctor was great, um, although it was a little weird because probably at least 10 times, I'm going to go conservative, during our conversation when I went in to uh, meet with the doctor, she just kept pointing at the screen and going, have you seen your results? 
Have you seen this? Like, have you, you are so healthy. Have you, have you, I don't see this. She said, you're 49 and there's things happening to women that are happening to you. What do you do? And I told her, I said, I eat a vegan diet. I do, med-. and she's like, that's it. Well, what do you do? That's it. I do yoga. She goes, you meditate. And I said, I meditate. And I said, I eat plant-based. She said, of course you do. And, um, but she was just like, I haven't seen numbers like that. And it was just, it was almost distracting how shocked she was about how healthy she thought that I was or how, where she was categorizing me. So anyway, what I learned is that our healthcare system sets the bar Real pretty low, low. <laughs> pretty low. Cause I, I had to push for those, no, I said, I want vitamin D. And she's like, well, your vitamin D is fine. I'm like, well, not according to the tests I had. I want to see what my vitamin D is. B12, you're fine. No, I want to see what it is. And so I had to push. And so what I'm saying is, you guys, like, you totally use your insurance, um, but ask for what you want because you can get it. It didn't cost me anything. It just cost her, it just cost a little bit of an awkward conversation. Um, but she was blown away when she saw the numbers and... Um, and also, it, it, you know, I highly recommend Inside Tracker. So the, where the bar is set high, which is where we want that bar, you guys, as athletes. We want that bar set high. So that, I totally went off on a tangent, but that helped me live a more vibrant life, right? That was amazing. And then the other thing we started doing was we had that interview with Holly Scotus and we started fasting, and so we started doing 24-hour fast, and then we had Goldhammer on, Dr. Goldhammer, and we learned so much about fasting and some things that we were doing wrong, and also that for our goals, which aren't necessarily weight loss, that 12 hours is perfect. And so we're still doing that. And um, then I get this book in the mail called The Yoga Way um, from a woman who, uh, so it's written by Swami Sachidananda, which is our teacher's teacher, and he's no longer on this earth, but this woman had done an, a, an edit on it to update some of the stuff, and she sent me a signed copy, and it came in the mail as a thanks for doing this online Yoga Goes Vegan. I was on a panel, and and that just came in the perfect way, and I started reading from the yogic perspective about fasting. And so... Anyway, just these changes, I think, help me live in a more vibrant body, which allows me, uh, you know, mind is going to follow body and body is going to follow mind. And so you improve one area and everything's going to improve. So when we live in a more vibrant body, our thoughts are going to be more vibrant. Everything is going to follow from what, because we're just magnets, right? So we're going to attract whatever our vibration is. I love how Wayne Dyer says it. Like, you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are, which can kind of be like a stunning thing to try and metabolize that, you know, you say, and I attracted this. Yeah. And not because you're a bad person. It's just know that that's how powerful we are. And, you know, negativity is poison and judgment is poison and negative self-talk is poison. And so to live a more vibrant life, it's not negating those things or trying to avoid those things, understand that those things are going to show up, but in the moment, guiding yourself towards something else, putting your focus on something else other than that poison will help you live a more vibrant life. And then my other one was unconditional love, uh, the legacy left by your mom, who was wonderful, and holy crap, did we need that. We needed that. I needed that so bad. Um, yeah, it was a crazy year in February of 2021. A dear friend and one of my students, one of my meditation students, was killed uh, by her ex-boyfriend. And we've talked about this briefly on the podcast before. And um, wow, like unconditional love and acceptance. And and um, I learned so much from that and that the sacrifice that Mary made in this life, you know, on a soul level left me with this heightened compassion and understanding of people who are paralyzed by fear because those f- those first few days I was paralyzed in fear 
It was close to our home where it happened. It was um, at the hands of somebody who knew we were trying to help her get away from him. He had been in her house. I had made him dinner. I, you know, he knew where we lived. And and um, the f- the level of fear and to have somebody so close to you be murdered, the level of fear was beyond. It was paralyzing. I to close my eyes was intensely scary. And then to really contemplate unconditional love in the middle of like unprecedented trauma, that unconditional love. And I said it in that podcast when we were setting intentions. I wanted to know, careful for what you ask for, people. I wanted to know more about the unconditional love that allows for suffering. And um, and, and I also talked about And I wonder in that moment, and I can't remember, but I wonder in that moment if I was talking about, you know, thinking about Mary when I was saying this, about people who are, you know, you see them going down a road and you can't save them. And so when I I reheard that today, I was like, whoa, we had no idea what was coming. We really didn't. I felt a deep disturbance in the field for months. I was experiencing physical um, dis-ease, headaches, nightmares, Um, and, um, yeah. And whoa, like my masterful, masterful teacher that was our friend Mary, uh, left me with this huge opportunity to contemplate the unconditional love that allows for that kind of suffering and violence and evil. Um, whoa, it was, it was intense. And so, in that air, you guys, I want to thank you, those of you who reached out to us. Um, when I look at the timeline of it, um, we were coming off of our camp, happened the weekend after our camp. And leading up to our camp and during our camp, it was very tumultuous. We There was a lot of things that were off balance and we hadn't heard, you know, from her and and there was a lot of unrest and uh, we were reaching out. I was reaching out and we received an email. I remember during camp and I was like, oh my God, we got an email, you know, from her and and explaining some of the stuff around the situation and, and that email was extremely unsettling. And then we're running this camp, which is incredibly deep and incredibly beautiful and incredibly connected. And we're in this contrast, you know, and and I don't think people realize that this community is not just a light for you, like it's a light for us. And that camp last year, like it was the light in this impending darkness. And then, and, and like being able to, like we moved into this insane trauma the following week, but we were like, we were coming to it from this beautiful, connected experience of light and, and love and challenge and, and community. It was just crazy to think that we were delivered into the darkness from the light. And then in those days after, all those people that reached out to us, like you have no, you have no idea how much it matters to someone who's experiencing something so unresolvable to have somebody say, hey, I heard and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say, but I'm thinking about you. Like, that's amazing. That that helped so much. And that was a huge teacher for me to not shy away from people who are experiencing trauma to go and reach out and say those things. So I want to thank the community because it was like, it was the light of this community and the people who... Um, who reached out and and not even the people who didn't reach out. Like we felt all of it, like the light of this community really assisted me in moving forward. We had a, we had an interview. It was that interview with Holly Scotus on the Wednesday, right? So it happened on Saturday and we found out on Sunday morning and on Wednesday we had this interview and we were just like, I was like a shock soldier. Like I was just in shock. And, and I just remember being like, we have to do this interview. We have to do this interview. Like, we have to do this interview. Like, we get to live. Like, we get to live. We have to do this interview. And and it's with a yogi. And it was just this beautiful conversation. And was like, it was this privilege that we get to produce this podcast every week for people. And that was a piece that kept us going in a time where we really could have been 
paralyzed. And I'm not talking about pushing through. Like we had, we were like, oh, we got to do this. We got to do this. No, we didn't. We were really, I feel like I was really good at giving myself space and time. And we only did the things that were like necessary and gentle and all of that. But yeah. So, I mean, unconditional love, right? So let's take it to the extreme. I mean, I'm going to, this is the, is this the open and honest show? Cause I'm going to go there. Um, to have unconditional love for the man that took her life, you know? And, and it was, at first I couldn't even think about him because I was too scared. That fear was insane. It was insane. It was nothing I had ever experienced. And, um, and then in like the spring, and I had been talking to meditator Bob about it and he was like, that's your path, right? Like you, in a world where so few will surround this soul in light, this is your work. You know, and so get there uh, and be patient with yourself. And it was like in the spring, I started to get there. And it was still scary and uncomfortable and, and all of that. But, uh, and I'm still working on it. I'm be totally honest. Like, I'm still working on it because it's easy not to think about it. Um, but the unconditional love thing got rolled out um, big in 2021. And so I'm going to continue these two intentions into 2022 to live more vibrantly, to continue to raise my consciousness and, and live the demonstration and get out there and do gnarly, dirty, dirty races and have fun and be competitive and be a human, uh, you know, and, uh, and also realize that there's something greater that's driving my ship. And that's the something greater that I'm going to continue to allow to organize my life as well that I'm willing to experience whatever I need to experience in order to fully fulfill what I came here to do. And that experience with Mary was, was one of those things. Uh, I just didn't know that, you know, I was going to have to experience something like that, but I do believe that we can be okay. And I do believe that everything results to good. And I've seen an incredible amount of good and that good comes from that source of love and uh, so I have a deeper relationship with, with that love now. Um, so yeah, those are my intentions. I just had no idea what was coming. Yeah, yeah. Pretty intense. And um, yeah, I, 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 think, I think you'd be letting yourself off if you didn't continue these intentions moving forward. Yeah. And like, I'm feeling like really kind of uncomfortable right now because maybe somebody's listening to this and they're, you know, somebody could be angry that I'm talking about surrounding this person with lo- with light. <laughs> and I've got to risk that because who I truly am is love. And, and, and if I'm really to honor Mary, because she gave me an incredible privilege to work with her in a capacity that not many people got to work with her in, if anybody, really. And I know how important love was to her. And I know how important it was for her to live more of that and express more of that in her life. And she did it so well in her generosity. But there was another level of love that she wanted to bring to the surface, and that was unconditional. And she called me to that, to higher levels when she was living and she called me to um, levels I never believed I would ever be asked <laughs> to, to aspire to after she left this earth. And so this is my experience that's true to me and true to me only. And everybody's going to process it differently and however they do that is exactly what they need to do. And, and for me, this is exactly what I needed to do for me and what I needed to receive. And, and, um, and I'm forever grateful to her uh, for all of the, uh, the opportunities she gave me while on this earth and not on this earth to rise to higher levels, you know, and, uh, and know that she's you know, who she truly is, is still very much intact. Um, But it's weird to go through something like that and 
the self-forgiveness is massive and non-judgment. And I saw these things coming from within me too, you know, judgment, uh, non-forgiveness, all that stuff. So, yeah. So I'm going to, I I mean, I can't imagine that. I mean, I'm thinking maybe the universe is going to go, all right, she paid some massive dues in 2021. Maybe we'll let her cruise through 2022. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, but they say that everything that you experience prepares you for the next thing. And, you know, your mom set us up for this so beautifully. Like it was close. It was months, you know, and, uh, man, like she totally left us with this legacy of love and service and, um, yeah. And I got to realize that to heights that I never thought possible or imagined that I would be, uh, be realizing in this life. So I'm going to go with those intentions. I'm going, I'm going right back to living a vibrant life and let's go deeper with unconditional love. You know, show me more, show me more, show me, show me where I'm, show me where I'm not loving. Oh, <laughs> it's not, it's a scary thing to say. All right. That was a huge chunk that I just spoke. So go, Beach. I don't Wrap really this have up. more to say. Um, Wrap this up. What are your intentions leading yeah, into 2022? It's going to continue with unconditional love. It's a pretty powerful theme. And uh, it, it can come in many forms. And you just got to be, you don't have to be anything. But um, the more you're awake to, the more you're awake to the, uh, experiences that you are confronted with every day that challenge you, the more you're going to grow. If that makes sense. So if you're trying to get through them or indulge in them or, or block them out, the growth is in actually creating or beginning to understand your relationship with it. Yeah. And also there's a discernment that is very, very important to make that the act that occurred that took her life is not acceptable. Not acceptable at all. It is the biggest violation of ahimsa, which is, you know, doing the least amount of harm in any given situation. And we don't have the right to take life and to take our own life or to take our own life and to take the life of another those that none of that was okay. None of that was okay. But that's that's I'm discerning that between the part of that person that is also within me, which is the oneness, which is our interconnectedness. And so it's bigger than like, oh, I'm le letting him off. No, it's not that. It's bigger. It's on the soul level. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a realization of that essence of who you are. And so whether or whether, you, whether, or whether or not you believe that, um, maybe it sparks some conversation in your own mind to contemplate, you know, because this is just my reflection. It's just true to me. Nobody else, just me. So like when somebody, when it's, so however anybody navigates anything, right? Like if it's true to them, then why would we ever judge anybody? If it's true to them, then it's none of our business. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I wrong on that? Does that make sense? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I you're just giving people permission to have their own feelings and to fully own and accept those feelings, not worrying about what others perceive them to be or, or reacting to the, your own feelings because you're worried about what other yeah. um, people would, would perceive it as. So a lot of joy in 2021 too, though. We had so much joy. Yeah. I, we, I don't want to just like, you know, bum everybody out. Um so much joy, so much gratitude, and just 
you know, like Bob said, you guys got called off the bench because mm-hmm. there was times where we were like, we don't, I don't, just like, don't want to be in this position. I don't want to be in this paralyzing fear. I don't want to be in this non-forgiveness. I don't want to be here. And he was like, you got called off the bench. So <laughs> like step up to the plate. Uh, so yeah, it was an amazing year. I mean, it was the high highs. It was the low lows. It was uh, really, really <laughs> growth. Lots of growth. Growth spurt. Mm-hmm. Big growth spurt. So 2021, back nu- numerology, 2021 was a year to make change that you've been wanting to make for a long time, but it was also, and this makes sense, right? It was also going to shine a light on your weaknesses, which you really need the light shine on your weaknesses in order to make the changes you've been make, wanting to make for a long time, right? So that just makes, it makes so much sense. And so I guess um, for everyone listening, like, how did that go, right? Like, did, was there change? Did it shine a light on your week? Like, what did you learn about yourself? This isn't about punishment or beating yourself up. It's about, okay, what did I do really well? Okay, let's continue those because that's baked in now. That's good. And then what could I have done better and then do better? Like, I'm going to do better. I wasn't always... Doing better. I wasn't always doing better. So I'm going to do better. Uh, And I think this intention of unconditional love, just it's already hardwired in there that you're going to do better. I just think about that might be the next t-shirt, do better. Not your welcome. (laughs) Your welcome is good too. (laughs) Tell them about your welcome. Your welcome is. What do you guys think about your welcome after you hear this? Well, basically, you know, the life that you live, the things that you do (laughs) that you perceive or that you believe are beneficial for the collective, you know, meditating, doing yoga, eating plant based, uh, being patient and calm and exercising and doing all those things, sending out love. You don't see those things. Um, But sometimes, People want to scream from the mountaintop and say, I'm doing like I'm doing this. It feels so good. You should be doing it too, or you can do it too. Um so sort of sort of I think maybe it was at a race where um it might have been up in um Flagstaff when you were doing that triathlon. I don't know, we were joking around and we were just like, You're welcome. <laughs> Because you could hear the chaotic energy of like, oh, the swim, there's a step down on the swim and you, you there's a rock there or Whatever was happening, you could feel the energy of the people, but we were just joking. It's like, you're welcome. Like, we're holding space. We're <laughs> meditating. We're, it's, it's pretty funny. It's a play on it. But um, yeah, for me, the you're welcome started when I would, because anytime one of our athletes gets on a plane, we tell them to meditate. Of course, we tell them to meditate, but we tell them to go longer. Like, we challenge them usually with like 90 minutes on the plane. And I always say, like, when you're going down the aisle, just start looking at people going, You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, because you're totally bringing the peace, you're bringing the calm, you're bringing the relaxation. And chances are there's people on the plane that are anxious. Mm -hmm. And our energy matters in every moment. So, and we're magnets. So, you know, when we serve as the magnet, to cultivate peace and calm. And I'm sure there's other people meditating on the plane doing the same thing, but I always, people always laugh. Like it kind of breaks the ice when I'm challenging them with a long meditation. I'm like, hey, you can just get on the plane and be like, you're welcome. Oh no, you're welcome. I got gotcha. you. I'm going to be in 23B and I'm going to be meditating for 90 minutes. You're welcome. And I may levitate above the seat. <laughs> so, yeah, do better. Do That's better. a good shirt too. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Do better or you're welcome? They're going to be like, neither. Those are stupid. Right. You don't want your shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I love you unconditionally anyway. All right. Wrap it up, Beach. All right. Well, uh, yeah, that was quite the, uh, that was quite the episode. Um, we appreciate all of you um, following along. And um, for those that, you know, came up and, and engaged with us this year and, you know, sent us an Instagram message, said, oh, we've been following you. And then you come up and, and say hi or connect with us, like that was super cool. And then, then to find out, like we connect with you at multiple races and events, and 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 little little drops of um, experiences that you all have um, had over the past year that came from maybe a conversation or or um, one of our podcast guests that you reached out to. Even like this is it. This like we're bringing this all connection. We're bringing connection and community. Uh, we're creating that. 
And it just does, doesn't necessarily have to come through Jess or myself or Clark. Like it can go through podcast guests to listener. And that's what we hear back from. And it's so beautiful. So, you know, if you have a story like that or some something that touches you, like always feel free to share it with us. We we thrive on that. Um, and it just uh, it just completes the circle a little bit. Let's lets us know that um, what we're doing um, is vibrating and sending that trickle, uh, sending that um, ripple effect out into the into the world. Um, and of course, just for Clark, the the coach of joy. Um, <laughs> We just hear so often he is the connector. People were screaming out at him, I think at Indian Wells. Is that Clark? Is that Clark? Um, Arizona was a big one too, Arizona, Ironman yeah. Arizona. Um, He's a hit. He, for some reason, he just has a spirit and energy that people just uh, people turn their stoic face into a, a cheery smile and one of joy and love. Um, and you can just see it. Changed when they when they approach Clark. So, always grateful for this guy. But um, yeah, uh, amazing show. We're approaching, or this may be past our three hundredth show. No, no, no? all right. Well, we're like approaching three hundred. We are close. Yes. All right. Getting closer. Clark's up. Clark's Time on the move. For dinner. He was so good. He got an A plus. Or another walk. <laughs> we can squeeze another mile in. <laughs> all right. All right. Peace later (laughs) or peace now